But I, I, I just want you to know this, watching me today, wherever you are, whatever circumstance you're in, God's hands are crossing. And what you thought was the second blessing, and most folk are happy with the second blessing. Just give me something. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not interested in the second blessing. I want the right hand of the Father on my head, transferring Abraham's blessing into my life. This blessing that, they, that, that he passed on to his grandsons was monstrous in its implication. It was, it was earth shattering what he was giving to his sons. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're watching me today and you're going through terrible times and you're being sold down the river by your brothers and you've been accused of stuff and you're, you're going through poverty in prison and you're thinking, my God, when will this all end? Because Joseph kept his spirit right. Remember the baker and the butler. They came and told him and he interpreted the dreams and then they left and he was still left in prison. And then one day, years later, Pharaoh had a dream. Oh, wow. There's a guy called Joseph. He, I wonder if he's still in prison. Most folk would have said, listen, pal, you should have remembered me a long time ago. Now you want me with your heads on the chopping block. Away you go. But because his nature was right and his spirit was right and he didn't hold right. a grudge. My dad had a saying, you can't be bitter and be blessed. Bitter and be blessed. Bitterness kills everything you do in your life. And I've had reason to be bitter in my life. And I've decided in my life to make a conscious decision to put it under the blood of Jesus and keep on going. And I'm here to tell you that God's talking through me and Pastor Tony to you today to tell you, don't you quit. Don't you quit. Because in the end of the story, it was Joseph and his sons that had received the blessing of the Father. And I'm praying in Jesus' name, Father. Fed him. Absolutely. Go ahead. He fed him. You know, if you read the end of the story, you'll see where he, he said, you know what? You have meant for my evil. God. God has turned to my good. So everything that he went through, the pit, the prison, Potiphar's house, all of that yeah. was a setup for the move up. Wow. And, and then at the end, if you remember... They come to see him, and they find out, well, that's, that's our brother Joseph, and now he's prime minister of Egypt. And yeah. then he <laughs> says, go get my father. And so God raised him up uh, from obscurity to notoriety. To save his family. And that's what God's wanting to do on the second son, to save his family. And the, very, the very ones that are cursing you, those that are listening and that are, yeah. you know, I've, listen, as a pastor, I've had, I've had church people do you like that, treat you yeah. like you were the enemy instead of the shepherd. And I've watched the tables turn. The Bible says that he prepares a table for me in the presence of mine oh, enemies. My enemies. And I watch God take I what, take that, stuff that people can put you through and they turn around and you have to be their salvation. In other words, Absolutely. you have to be uh, the person, you know, they find out right quick that how desperate they are to, for a shepherd. That is the truth. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. What goes I, around comes around, doesn't it? I'm not, I'm not a pastor and I'm not called to be one, but I've, I, I, I'm part of a lot of pastors' lives. <laughs> And um, I, I, keep, I keep telling you all the time, Tony, that's why I'm not ever going to be a pastor. But I've discovered this, that I've seen people curse you and die. Literally. Yeah. Curse yes. you and die. Literally. And don't put your, never touch the Lord's anointed. They may be wrong, but they're still the anointed.